that are built. Craig? Vicki Dotty West's doctors say she knew just how dangerous this operation might be. They went into it expecting that she'd have only about a one in four chance of surviving that surgery. They say she was awake and conscious before the operation this morning and aware of what might happen. The immediate cause of death was the fact that her heart failed. And her heart failed secondary to blood loss, secondary to the severe injuries to both sides of her liver. Surgeons here say they just about finished repairs on Dottie West's badly damaged liver this morning when her heart stopped under the strain of surgery and repeated blood transfusions. We felt that we had about a 25% chance of getting uh, a survivor today, about a 75% mortality. If you look at it in terms of the injuries, we got 75% of the injuries fixed and we got burned on the last one. She'd spent five days in intensive care after last Friday's wreck near the Opry House as doctors tried to control her internal bleeding. They say they did the best they could, but it just wasn't enough. I think our course was right. I think we just came up a little bit short in terms of physiologic reserve. Family members are keeping their grief private and speaking only through their attorney. I think we all sort of believed in our hearts that, that, it, that she could pull through, but it just didn't happen. The doctors here say this has only been a survivable operation in the last few years, and that only about 30 people nationwide have lived through it, all of them much younger and with hearts in much better condition than Ms. West. We also should mention that uh, doctors here say her internal bleeding was so heavy and they had to replace so much of her blood with transfusions that they, in effect, replaced her body's entire blood supply four times in the last five days. Vicki? Craig, we've had an awful lot of calls about people, or people asking about funeral arrangements for Dottie West. What can you tell us? Right now, the family is still deciding what they're going to do. They say they will make an announcement at 9 o'clock tomorrow morning on how friends and fans can pay their respects. All right. Thanks very much, Craig. While her family grieves, friends and fans all over the world mourn, too. With more than three decades in the music business, Dottie West touched literally millions of lives with her music. From the stage to the airwaves, from radio to television, West impacted people. Continuing our coverage is News Channel 5's Scott Couch who joins us from the stage where Dottie was as familiar a sight as the old barn background. Scott? Chris, Dottie West was truly part of something very special here at WSM's Grand Ole Opry. She was also one of its most colorful cast members. For nearly 30 years, she stood on this stage. She sang her songs in a voice that can only be described as really unique. And when fans out here in the audience looked up on the stage and saw Dottie West, they knew they were in for something truly special. Here comes my baby. Again. Over the years, Dottie West performed for Grand Ole Opry fans hundreds of times. She was a real crowd favorite. And for that reason, news of her death hit hard with fans along Music Row. When we kept following the news on TV, it sounded worse every day. We lost someone good. Of course, I was brought up on country music, and I just, I love it all, so she will be missed. Oh, please. In addition to her talents as a performer, West had an ear for great singers. Country superstar Larry Gatlin was one of her discoveries, as was Steve Warner, who once played guitar in West's band. Gatlin was in California when he got the news. He says he owes his career to Dottie West. Let me go. You know, without Dottie, uh, like I, I told somebody yesterday, I'd probably be a very average attorney in Houston somewhere. She was a survivor. She was a fighter. And I really admire her for that. Tammy Wynette was one of West's closest friends. She says Dottie was determined to put her troubles with the IRS behind her. Wynette says her biggest regret is she didn't get to see West in the hospital before she died. But I kept thinking, once this operation's over with, maybe she'll get strong enough, you know, that then we can all, you know, go see her and tell her, you know, that how much we love her and we're pulling for her. And why we put things off like that, I don't know, but I did. I put it off, and I'd, what I'd give if I hadn't. At 58, Dottie West had a lot of Grand Ole Opry performances to look forward to, and Chris, she will perhaps be missed most of all by her Opry family. Scott, is the Opry planning any type of tribute for Dottie? On Friday night, the next show, there won't be anything formal, although I'm sure a number of the performers will mention her uh, and uh, in their thoughts and their prayers, and as well as those of the audience. On Saturday night, there will be a formal tribute should happen just before the 6.30 break. Chris? Thanks, Scott. Vicki? Dottie grew up in the shadow of that Opry stage in the McMinnville, and from beginning to end, professionally and personally, 
Dottie's life was a struggle. Our team coverage continues now with News Channel 5's entertainment reporter, Harry Chapman, who has more on her life in and out of the spotlight. Harry? Vicki Dottie was the eldest of ten children who, through hard work, made her way through college. But her dream was always music. She not only was a good entertainer, she was a prolific songwriter with hundreds of titles to her credit. Here comes my baby back again. Here Comes My Baby was Dottie's signature song. In 1964, earning her the first Grammy won by a female country music artist. By 1971, Dottie achieved another first, recording a national commercial for Coca-Cola. Country, country Sunshine was a big hit, not only for Coke, but also for Dottie. A song that even helped Ray Blanton in his Tennessee governor's race. Lamar Alexander, Blanton's opponent, partly blamed his loss on the jingle's popularity. In the late 70s, she teamed with Kenny Rogers for Every Time Two Fools Collide and What Are We Doing in Love, winning two CMA awards. Larry Butler produced the pair. In my opinion, her happiest moments was when she was on stage in front of an audience and, and, and singing for people. Uh, I, I always thought of her, she could have been a tremendous circus performer traveling all over the country because she loved traveling on that bus and doing the shows for people. On Tuesday, Kenny Rogers visited Dottie in her hospital room to cheer her up. Today, he mourned her loss. When she sang about pain, she felt that pain. And when she sang about love, I mean, she could be in love for that moment. And when she sang about beauty, you could just see that she lived that beauty. And I think a lot of people sing words, and Dottie West, I think, sang emotion. Last year, Dottie's financial fortunes tumbled. She filed for bankruptcy with more than a million dollars in debts. The IRS auctioned off her belongings during this summer's fanfare. Dottie attended, signing autographs and bid on some items. She remained optimistic, looking forward to putting her life and career back together when the accident tragically claimed her life. Dottie West will not only be missed for her music, but Vicki for her kindness to others as well. What do you think people will remember most about Dottie West? I think her willingness to help people like Larry Gatlin and Steve Warner, even Kenny Rogers said when he performed, said she was, when he thinks of Dottie West, he thinks of food because she was the best cook in the world. She's going to be missed. She surely will. Thanks, Harry. In Dottie's memory, the American Red Cross will hold a special blood drive in her hometown of McMinnville. You can donate blood tomorrow from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. at the McMinnville Medical Center on Highway 70. The Red Cross says they've received several requests from people wanting to give blood to help other accident victims. The bankruptcy trustee said she tried to hide her household possessions in a storage locker. He found them and put them up for auction. And within five weeks this summer, she was involved in two separate traffic accidents. The last one, Friday night, eventually cost Dottie West her colorful life at age 58. Tom Lee. Channel 4 News. In the late 70s, and was a friend to her for much longer than that. Kenny visited Dottie's hospital room yesterday, and today said from Los Angeles that he will miss her very much. When she sang about pain, she felt that pain. And when she sang about love, I mean, she could be in love for that moment. And when she sang about beauty, you could just see that she lived that beauty. And I think a lot of people sing words and... Dottie West, I think, sang emotions. I think she truly believed and felt everything she sang about. Bill Hall and Rudy Kalis. With a song in her heart, Dottie West was a legend in country music. Her fans and friends are mourning her death tonight, but they are also celebrating her life. When she sang about pain, she felt that pain. And when she sang about love, I mean, she could be in love for that moment. And Dottie West's heart gave out today. She never recovered from a car wreck last Friday night. We have special coverage, including a review of Dottie West's Grammy Award-winning career. And we'll have reaction from the Middle Tennessee town where she was born. Our coverage begins with the doctor's last attempt to save the singer's life. Carlos Bain reports. Dottie West doctors say the country music star died after almost three hours on the operating table. Dr. John Moore says West's heart and body 
weren't strong enough to pull her through the surgery. The immediate cause of death was the fact that her heart failed. And her heart failed secondary to blood loss, secondary to the severe injuries to both sides of her liver. West had to have all of the blood in her body replaced four times in the six days she was in the hospital. This was West's third surgery to repair her ruptured liver and spleen. Dr. Morris says West's age and the severity of her injuries were too much to overcome. We felt that we had about a 25% chance of getting uh, a survivor today, about a 75% mortality. If you look at it in terms of the injuries, we got 75% of the injuries fixed and we got burned on the last one. Dottie West was injured in a car accident last Friday when the car she was riding in crashed. According to Metro Police, the driver, 81-year-old George Thaxton, was giving West a lift to the Grand Ole Opry after her car broke down. Thaxton has a history of drunk driving. He registered .10 on a breath test and was arrested on a DUI charge after rear-ending a car at a traffic light in Bellevue. But the state office where the clerks enter information never got word on that arrest or a hit and run he was involved in. We don't know unless the court informs us, and until the court informs us, it's not posted to his record. We have no way to know unless the court lets us know. On Music Row, word of Dottie West's death was hard to accept for fans, even though the odds of her recovery weren't good. We liked your singing very much. We were sorry to hear of her passing. We're sorry that people didn't help her out when she needed it. The manager of the Grand Ole Opry says there are plans to remember Dottie West this Friday. He says she will remain a part of country music. Carlos Bain, Channel 4 News. Dottie West's colleagues in country music will miss her as much as her fans. Dottie came on the Nashville scene back in the 1960s, along with other unknowns like Roger Miller, Willie Nelson, and Kenny Rogers. That was made to give a man a lot of pleasure. Some of Dottie West's biggest hits were made with Kenny Rogers in the late 70s. The two remain friends, sharing success and adversity. And according to Rogers, some excellent home-cooked meals. Just yesterday, Rogers stopped by Vanderbilt Hospital to see his old singing partner and bolster her spirits. I told her that I wanted her to get out of there and fix me another meal that I hadn't eaten well since the last time I was at her house. And she kind of smiled as best she could under the conditions and squeezed my hand and, and said thank you. So I, I really truly believe that she knew it was me and Marianne talking to her. Very little, if anything, was given to Dottie West. She worked for her success. The eldest of ten children, Dottie came to Nashville from a poor farming family in McMinnville. She once said that when she hit the stage, she went for applause just as hard as the guys did. Certainly, she helped pave the way for the women in country music today. She fulfilled a lot of her dreams to be a, a country music star, to be in a starring role uh, for a long time. And to have it tragically end with uh, bad investments and to be hounded by the IRS is a terrible is a terrible end to uh, uh, a sort of fairy tale. She just couldn't get any breaks in the last few years of her life. You know, you would have thought there would have been somewhere along the way something good could have happened for her. She was a great lady, and truly, truly a good friend, and always there when I needed her. Dottie West's passing was a shock for her family and friends. Funeral arrangements and memorials are still incomplete tonight. Nashville helped make Dottie West a star, but McMinnville is where local folks first discovered her talent. West grew up there singing at fairs and talent shows. Tonight, the community is paying tribute to its hometown girl who made good. Vanessa Eccles reports. Oh, yeah, WBMC. Pat Ramsey devoted his afternoon airtime to a fellow McMinnville native. Oh, Dottie came out with an album, Once You Were Mine, doing an old Chris Christopherson song, Me and Bobby McGee. Busted flat in Baton Rouge. After the news of Dottie West's death, Ramsey changed his music format to play the records that made Dottie one of the leading ladies of country BMC. music. Special request for Dottie West fans again. It's high time. The staff at McMinnville's WBMC AM says it seemed like a fitting tribute. The station played Dottie's records back in the 60s when the hometown girl was struggling to make a name for herself in the country music business. Bud Godwin says Dottie spent a lot of time at the radio station too. I thought uh, with the right material, 
with the right uh, people to uh, promote her and produce her and everything that, yeah, I thought that she might hit it big. I thought she had the capability, the talent, and uh, certainly the persistency to do it. But Godwin says Nashville didn't make Dottie forget McMinnville. She helped pay to build this community baseball park, which bears her name. Thursday, Warren County residents will have a chance to show they didn't forget Dottie either. The local Red Cross is asking donors to give blood as a memorial for Dottie, who received at least 35 pints of blood during the five days after her accident. It was going to be in her honor. Of course, we're sorry we had to do it under these circumstances, but it's better this way than not at all. And we do know that the blood will need to be replaced, and this, this is our way of doing it. The industry is remembering Dottie West, the singer, with a long career and a list of hits. But back at WBMC, folks say country music has lost a great voice, but they've lost a great friend. See, Dottie West and crying, a true legend. Vanessa Eccles, Channel 4 News, Warren County. Grand Old Opry star Grandpa Jones has been hospitalized tonight. A 77-year-old performer is listed in stable but guarded condition at St. Thomas Hospital. A St. Thomas spokesman says Jones was taken to the hospital by private car at about 4 o'clock this afternoon. The spokesman will not comment on Grandpa's illness saying only that he is undergoing tests. Dottie West is being remembered tonight as one of the pioneers of country music. She died today at the age of 58 from injuries suffered in a car accident last week. I was raised on country sunshine. Dottie West recorded 52 albums and was best known for her bouncy hit, Country Sunshine. Always looking on the bright side, she had hoped that recent financial problems were behind her and she was on the road to a comeback when tragedy struck. On Friday, a car she was riding in crashed into an off-ramp on the way to the Grand Ole Opry. At a press conference today, her manager said she received an outpouring of support as she fought for her life through the weekend. Yeah, we've seen, received a lot of calls from not only Dottie's uh, fellow singers, but actors, friends from all over the world and her fans who prayed and called about her. Here comes my baby. Dottie was the first woman to win a country music Grammy Award in 1964 for the hit Here Comes My Baby. But she reached the pinnacle of her success in the late 70s when she recorded several popular duets with Kenny Rogers, who became a close friend and who visited her in the hospital. I think that Dottie West as much or more than anyone I ever met, when she sang about pain, she felt that pain. And when she sang about love, I mean, she could be in love for that moment. At the height of her career, she was making one to two million dollars a year. She bought a mansion in Nashville and filled it with mementos. There were happy times with her four children. Then in 1990, misfortune caught up with her. Financial problems forced her to file bankruptcy and the bank foreclosed on her home. It's just devastating, I'm sorry. I never thought it would come to this. Putting those troubled times behind her, Dottie had embarked on an ambitious concert tour and was planning to write a book. She was optimistic about the future. I have not written, nor have I sang, my best song yet. But I will, I hope. One of her oldest friends, country singer Tammy Wynette, says she'll always remember Dottie's wonderful sense of pride and dignity. Funeral arrangements are still pending. Reviewing their friends and well-wishers at a Nashville funeral home just a few moments ago. Visitation at Woodlawn Funeral Home continues until 9 o'clock tonight at 660 Thompson Lane. Visitation continues tomorrow from 10 a.m. until 2 p.m.